an easement of limited duration. So say there was a five-year easement on the property. During that time, if you wanted to knock it down, you'd, you would have to go through our office, um, not through our office, but you'd have to notify us. This is related just to the HRF fund. Um, but you wouldn't have to pay back the grant. That's not a condition of the easement. So, but our pre-development money doesn't have any clawbacks, no restrictions associated with it. Um, you know, I mean, we can't, we're here to try to help you choose the best, well, what we think is the best approach, but if it's not the way the town ends up going, it's not, it's not really our, it's not within our authority or purview to, you know, there's no binding um, okay. agreement associated with it. Okay. Obviously, if we apply for the federal, it's a much bigger deal, much, the National Registry has a lot more. It's, well, uh, it does have that, that's that yeah. uh, protection act. Um, so yeah, yep. if you wanted to tear it down, but even then you wouldn't be paying us anything. Um, if there was a, if there was enough local opposition to the demolition, that group, a, a Weathersfield group, we don't, we don't sue people, but the, but a Weathersfield contingent might say, no, you can't tear it down. And then they would, you know, they would, um, you know, enlist the attorney general's office to try to stop the demolition, but, gotcha. but that's so, that uh, question on the restoration funding it, it, the, for restoration. Do you need to be on the state registry to apply for those? Is that a condition of the grants that you exactly? Right. Yes, you do to, to get um, to get our state funding. And actually, we don't really administer any federal funding except for the CLG money. But that's not bricks and mortar. Anyway, to get our funding that we do offer, you do have to be listed on the state or national register. So if you you just go for state from a funding perspective, it's exactly the same as if you went for national. That's a great information. And uh, is, are there any other questions from anyone, for Mary? I mean, then you've given us a, a lot to discuss and talk about. Thank you. You're welcome. Feel free to call or email if you have any other Thank questions. You. We have all your contact info, so thank you very much. I, I, You're I, welcome. Thank you, Karen. All right. Mary, hold on one second. Just, just to confirm, you said you meet on what, the first Wednesday of the month? Yes, the first Wednesday of the month. Um, the council likes to get the information a little before that, so um, whether, it's a, whether, it, whether it's a nomination or a funding application, um, I guess it'd be a funding application first. For example, <laughs> October 7th, I'd need something by, you know, like the 16th or something. So think about a couple of weeks ahead of time. Gotcha. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of the meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Good seeing you. Nice you. you too. Oops, if I can leave. Hold All right. <laughs> Hi, Mary. You popped up on my screen. Hello. Um, okay. What do you... Shall we have a moment just to discuss that? Any thoughts or move on with the agenda? Sounds like you can't lose. So just with step one though, it sounds like as long as we just get the designation in which they will help us write the grant for, and we don't have to have a match, a dollar for dollar match if we can get together in October, November, or December. Then it sounds like nothing We've got an honor with no strings attached. Did everybody understand it the way I did? That's the way I heard it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that would mean that we'd understand what we have. Uh, we'd learn about, you know, it, and she's going to come and say, oh, you can't do that. That doesn't qualify. Or it does. And these are the reasons why. So that would be very helpful. Mary, I would assume you'd need to go before the town council and ask them. You'd need to go to the town council and ask them for permission. Yeah, so it sounds like I heard two levels. The first is having someone locally who happens to live in Weathersfield come through to see whether or not we're eligible to apply, and then based off of that to apply. So it, it would probably make sense to look at the, that first step of let's see if we're eligible. And then um, at that point, we, we could go to council um, and see um, if, they're, if they're okay with us applying. It sounds like a win-win. 
Did you hear that? I'm sorry. Responsibility for, for guy, I think the woman's name was Marina. Did we go through Mary and ask her to have Marina take a trip to the, to the site and take a look at it and see if she can do a little digging on the history and if it's actually eligible? Yes, yeah. Let's do it. Who should, who should do that, Gary, in your mind? Who, who's the right person to make that contact? Yeah, I mean, I can send her an email. I have no problem doing an email follow-up. Okay, great. I, I, I thought we to provide her information. Didn't we have to submit the information a little bit? In a picture? Didn't she say that? No. Uh, she said she would love to see photos and know anything about the history that we know about the barn. Jim actually has a great <coughs> article about the barn that appeared in the Hartford Current. So we could send her both those things. Mary, your yeah. photos are great. I still have some of your photos that, I, that you took. They're beautiful. Not close-ups, but they're beautiful. Does that sound good, Gary? I mean, if you if you guys have access to that and you want to put it together, you can you can reach out to her as well, or you can send it to me. I let me know what you'd like to do. Okay, sounds good. All right. Very you can always good. give her Keisha's phone, Joe Keisha's phone number. To so talk about the history a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. One. That's that's kind of exciting. Yeah. To think about. All right. Do we have? Did we get any correspondence? I didn't get anything from anybody. Gary, did you get anything? Just looking. I had nothing for Keisha. No. Nope. Okay. Good. All right. On to other business. This is, this will be hopefully the heart of the meeting. Um, the last time we met, like an hour after we met, the town council determined that they were not going to give us the money for the grant. So after months of seeking a consultant and kind of buying into the whole process, um, they did not give us the $55,000 award for the grant. So, uh, and we had to wait a month really to meet again to, to kind of talk about it. So I think um, it was in, in processing that, it's not, I don't think it was wasted effort because we learned a lot about what the, the consultants would do. The request for proposals gave us a lot of information about different approaches. Um, I know I bought in completely to what Gary was saying uh, after talking to all of them about, you know, having a really uh, nonpartisan kind of open process. And so we started brainstorming by we, I mean, Gary and I, and I, I wrote to a couple of you and a couple of you wrote back to me, started brainstorming how we can go forward. We got paid a nice compliment by one of the councilmen and said, we're a bunch of bright people and they were pretty sure we could figure some things out. And so um, I'm gonna take them at their words. I think they're right. I think we can, can move forward on this. So Gary, um, you wanna start with what you, what you were able to come up with? Cause it's pretty exciting news. Sure. Um, so, in one of the conversations with Cindy, we we're trying to figure out where we go from here. Um, and there's a lot of institutions uh, in the area that we felt we could tap into some of their knowledge base and look for unique opportunities to do things a little differently. So, rather than bringing on a consultant um, uh, from the private sector, we decided to reach out to those institutions to see what uh, creative and hopefully low cost opportunities would avail themselves. So um, in speaking to the University of Hartford through their Barney School of Business, they run what's called a project-based learning um, experimental engagement where they tap into their um, seven different uh, colleges within the university to kind of grab, the, grab this interdisciplinary team of students uh, led by counselors um, and educators to uh, work on projects within communities. And we've done this type of work with the University of Connecticut School of Engineering, um, um, Trinity College. Um, and so University of Hartford kind of popped up as one that could bring architectural and engineering, graphic design, um, some of the planning related concepts, maybe some business development related, since uh, a lot of the conversation talks about return on investment and tying into what other um, tax incentive programs out there, historic tax credits, um, tax increment financing and other uh, available methods. And I had a conversation with them 
very briefly last week, I sent them the request for proposals that we sent out to consultants and said, look, this is what we were trying to do. Unfortunately, the costs were greater than we actually had access to. And they kind of came back with a conversation today about what they've done before in other communities, um, what this one particular individual had done in other communities he was trying to bring to the university partner. So the timing could not have been better. Um, the project lead on this, if we decide to go forward, has many years experience in economic development. I had a great conversation with him sharing stories uh, of, of projects he and I have done um, in our careers, but he is very well versed in educational opportunities, bringing the private sector together with, with um, educational institutions to create these programs. He did it in Springfield, um, he did it in Worcester, so he's, he's got a very unique perspective and it's, I attached, I sent you guys an email uh, very late and I apologize, but it kind of gives a, a background of what the university can offer as well as a very sh brief bio of, um, of, his name's Kevin Sweeney, his sister actually lives in Wethersfield, um, of some of his experience and what he can do. Uh, the other person who's part of this but didn't have a bio is Brooke Penders, and I don't know if anyone's ever worked with her or familiar with her. She is a Wethersfield um, resident. She's on the redevelopment agency, um, and she's very much involved with career, she works for University of Hartford as well in the career services department. Um, and so this is an educational opportunity for some uh, upperclassmen, uh, and it provides the town some great opportunity to tap on those resources at a very low cost. We're, we haven't finalized the dollar amount because we actually haven't finalized exactly what we're doing because that's a conversation that has to take place at this level. Um, but they're very much interested in participating. Um, we kind of have to do a little bit of scoping to maybe narrow down what it is we're looking for them to do. They're obviously not going to be the same as a, as a consultant would be um, in terms of, uh, uh, well, actually, they do have some credibility associated with them, but um, they do have some experience. They do have some uh, other communities they can pull from, but it will be more of an educational approach and it would be a, you know, a private consultant. Um, generating revenue for themselves. Uh, Gary, will yes. there be um, like a, a plan that comes out of this? In other words, one of the things we do uh, on the rec side, and you probably know about it, is uh, we have a Millwood master plan, we have a Cove master plan. Um, Spring Street right now has got that Spring Street plan where we're gonna get, I think a million dollars for that, something like that. Yep. That's gonna be done. Um, but you have a plan so that somebody can look at it and uh, you can get the money, you can get state funding, you can get different things like that. Um, if we don't have the plan, some type of comprehensive plan, I, I think it's gonna be very difficult to get um, money for these things. One of the reasons we have the Harbor Management Commission, the reason that was formed was to get money. So when we did the dredging this year or last year, is we get, uh, what was it, a state grant or we got something from the Army Corps of Engineers where the town really didn't have to pay for anything. Um, you know, and that's why we do these things is we have plans and then if someone comes to us, we can say, all right, this is where we have to work from. So in Mill Woods, for instance, the dog park was never on the master plan, but we pulled the plan out and we said, oh, there's a space right here. Do you want to do it here? And, the, you know, the committee that was doing the dog park said, yes, that would be great. We'll do it there. And the same with the bocce courts. The same with the, um, the pavilion. We get some people to look at and guide us. If there's something that's going to come out of this, we'll, we'll have something to guide us saying, you know what, we've got a space here for you to do this, or we got a space here for, uh, is that what's going to come out of this? The brief answer is yes. Um, the, the, the approach that we can decide is up to us, we have to obviously work with them and say these are the you know, these are these are the problem sets, these are the outcomes, the deliverables that we're trying to get. Where can we get to? But they talked a lot about uh, Kevin was talking a lot about design concepts, uh, the the ability to create surveys, do wetland delineations to determine what could actually go there, and then very similar to what we wanted with the consultant work work backwards from that information or what the residents are looking for to see what could fit in that spot. So they might come up with 
you know, a little different from the consultant. They might come up with, these are three things that can happen here. This is what the return on investment is. This is what the, um, you know, what the uh, value of the property is. This is what you can actually put here. Um, and then the impetus then falls on us. Um, you know, the conversation could be, okay, we're going to go back and the committee is going to rank these one, two, three, and then, you know, give us that final document that solidifies one, two, and three. Um, or we could choose to say, give us one, two, and three. Thank you very much. We'll do a presentation and they'll be part of it. We'll do a presentation to the council saying, these are the three things and here's the, you know, here's the cash flow of it and here's the benefit or here's the impact to the community. Um, and there it is. So we have some ability to decide how we want that to end. Um, again, I, will it be done to the same level of, um, you know, a consultant as, yeah, it may be. Um, we don't, I won't know until we tell them what we're looking for and then they can tell us what they can do. But for all intents and purposes, yes, there'll be, there'll be a document at the end that we can use. Okay. Gary, what happens with the, where does the community input fit in? Is that, is that something that we're looking for them to help us like a consultant would to have those infos, those sessions to gather information about what the community wants or? They can be. Um, keep in mind that these are uh, college students so they can yep. participate they could design a charrette they could they could design that that could be a learning opportunity for them um, that's a conversation to have with their um, their trying to think what to call them their project leader uh, mm -hmm. to determine you know where how much help they need doing that are they prepared to run the entire thing or is it through the assistance of the Keisha Farms Committee um, but the thought would be just I would not remove the community conversation component. I think that needs to be there. Okay, that's see, what I'm asking. You'll see this as that same visioning session, um, you know, having that conversation of having the, the engineers or the architects or the designers, graphic designers in the room and listening to what the residents say they want or don't want in that neighborhood. Um, I don't see that being part of the process. You don't see it being part of the process with University of Hartford? I do. Or you do. Okay. That's what yeah. I thought. Well, I do. I, I don't think that goes away. Okay. I think that stays. And that would include like traffic flow patterns and everything for the uh, neighborhood and everything as well. We have to put that on the table. It, okay. um, he didn't seem like that would be off the t as something they couldn't do. Like it, it, but you know, that's, that's one of those things again, checking the box. Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do that? The reality is we might have to do this in pieces rather than what we did before, what we would have done with a consultant. We might have to take all the information and all the data. And if those things are missing, we might have to supplement those when the time comes. Yeah, it's just the, the only, the, where I was going with it is that, you know, we get, we get, um, I don't think we can say, yeah, we like these ideas, obviously, that they come up with and put them, you know, have them do these feasibility studies without actually um, deciding what, you know, what are the possibilities that the community wants to. So that's all. It was just yeah, I, my opinion is that does not change. This is still a, okay. we our role is to bring people to the table to go through this process. I, I don't think we move forward without the resident input. Okay. Anyone else? Thoughts on having the University of Hartford students, Barney School of Business and the Arts School help us. So I wrote down while you guys were talking, um, it looks like public input, the community conversation seems to be the starting point with the students listening and participating so that they can kind of get a sense of what the community wants. An engineering study or, or and or a property survey, which would include Dan's concept of a, of a traffic flow or tra an analysis of traffic patterns. And then the final thing, and probably they're all equally important, but the final thing, very important, that a proposed development plan <coughs> lays out with some cost consequences too for the community to see based on what they heard, what's possible, and what they designed. And I think that's what, Dan, you were talking about with having some kind of a, um, a master plan at the end. Not that it has to be done all at once, but that shows us 
the way forward. Yeah, because what we got on the rec side was uh, you have this master plan that's sitting around for 20 years, and eventually somebody comes up and says, oh, I'm going to do that part. So, for instance, one of the parts that's being done now, people don't know about, is there's a footbridge between field one and field two and in the softball fields there behind the tennis courts area. So there's a group that's raising money. Um, I think they raised about $100,000 already, but um, they want to put in that footbridge. Um, so it's all, you know, it's not costing the town anything at this point. It, it, it hasn't gotten a point where it's being completed, but once it's on there, and if somebody comes to you, you can say, you know what, what about this? What about doing this? One of the other things going on is um, for, um, for instance, this is a little different, but the reservoir, there's an Eagle Scout that wants to do a project there, put in some uh, picnic tables, clear some of the things away so there's a picnic area there. And once again, it's not really much cost to the towns. Those type of things, if you have a plan, um, people can say, I want to do this or I want to, you know, and it doesn't cost the town anything. All right, Gary, does that give you something to talk to them about, you know, going forward? Some of the, the things that we're looking for as deliverables in working with them? All right, perfect. Hey, Dan, great segue. Money <laughs> and Eagle Scouts. This is perfect. This is, so you weren't at the last meeting, Dan, but I reported that you had made contact with the, the head of the Eagle Scouts in Weathersfield about maybe helping us. And now we've kind of gotten the at least the green light to look at some of the things that are on the property. And so I, I was just brainstorming to think of perhaps we could combine the Eagle Scouts and their willingness to help us with the hoop houses, which are very low cost, kind of a low level investment. They're not going anywhere. They're there on the property. And maybe we could get them to do some kind of a, a cleanup of that, just that area and tie it into some fundraising. And I was, I'm happy to hear you say that the town allows for private fundraising for, on public property, because I think Tara has a great idea to raise some money for a project. And the, the goal is kind of twofold. I don't want the community to forget about the farm. You know, I know with COVID and with economic stress <clears throat> and things that people have, I don't want them to say, hey, two years ago, we bought this farm, I'm paying for it, my taxes, whatever happened. And I would love them to see more activity, more, and, and hear more about what we're doing. So I'm just throwing that out there for discussion. And Gary, you will always be the last word as to what's possible and what isn't. But could we take on a small project like the hoop houses, you know, do a cleanup, do some fundraising, maybe bring some people onto the property, and then try and make it an educational opportunity for a high crest school students who maybe could do a little seed planting in the spring or something in these restored houses. Just thoughts. These are, these are the things I think about. Just your thoughts. What I think houses are they that you're referring to? Pardon me? What houses are you referring to? You know, behind the barn, there's those two metal structures. They're called hoop houses. And they're actually, Jim, you correct me if I get this wrong, but they're actually for seed starting. They're kind of like primitive greenhouses in a way. It's like a yeah, greenhouse. Plastic covered greenhouses. If, uh, if you go down to Anderson's and look in the back behind the, near the barns, you'll see two or three of those. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, no, I remember seeing them. I just didn't, I was trying to figure out a hoop house. What is a hoop? But I I'm got sorry. it. Now. It's a Pretty reference good. to the metal structure and the plastic's gone. But the <laughs> and the plastic is very, very inexpensive in the terms of the big picture. But the possibilities to excite the community and remind them that, you know, we've got this farm might be worth our time and effort. And Tara had a great fundraising uh, idea. If you want to just give them a little idea of what we might be able to do. Well, I wasn't sure if we're, uh, Gary, are we able to fundraise for projects on the property? I don't know if we established that. I don't know. Um, <sighs> Let me get back to you on that. Um, you probably can. I just need to figure out what the restrictions might be. Um, 
we on our end we'd have to establish a fund specific to mm -hmm. Keisha, which is fine. It's just an account. Let me get back to you on that one. So uh, this is what I was talking to. I, we're going to put together a, a, not a similar program, program, maybe a little bit different for Brooks Preschool in town for First Church. But um, the thought came to me, I don't know if you guys remember the entertainment books that we had. I remember when I was a kid, my parents bought this book for like $25 or $50, and it had specific discounted you know, at let's say it was Applebee's, you get buy one, get free with this coupon. And so my thought was if we did some sort of maybe it's entertainment book, we could get all different businesses involved in town. It's, it's good for them because everyone could use the business now these days, obviously. But I thought it would be pain, painless because these are places that you're going to shop at anyways. Um, and I don't think asking $25 or $50, I don't know, it'd really depend on upon what we would want to charge for this book. Um, anyhow, we wouldn't have to sell a lot of books to hit our goal. I think Cynthia said to get one of the hoop houses up and going. Did you say it was like $1,000, so Cynthia? $1,500 for the, just for like, the plastic, but that's buying the best plastic. And then, of course, we have to figure out how to attach it, but... Right. So, I mean, obviously we need to find people who would want to participate. And I don't know if um, the people who participate, like say Costanzo Clothing, my business wants to be a part of the book. Maybe I spend $50 to be a part of the book. So you're almost selling like an ad piece to be in this book. And in return, you know, you're, you're hoping that you're going to get this out to, you know, a few thousand people in town. So obviously it would be work on the committees end that, you know, we would have to have make this a grassroots effort. But I think it would be a win-win for everyone. What does the committee think? I love the idea of supporting local businesses. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Mike, remember the football players would always sell? Every year I bought from the football players. It, was almost, it wasn't even a booklet. It wasn't even that sophisticated. It was like a card. The cards, yeah. It a card, and it would have maybe 10 businesses in town, and you'd always get a discount at the business. Yeah. That you could, yeah. I mean, it could be something modeled on that. It doesn't, you know, so we could just. Yeah, I, you know, I know what she's talking about. The um, it was the entertainment books. The yeah. school. I know exactly what she's talking about, and and actually, I think some of them they had the coupons actually in them. This is going back to when there was nobody beats the whiz and all that around here. But yeah, I know exactly what she's talking about. And it was effective, wasn't it, as a fundraiser? I mean, it helped the kids. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I guess, with the entertainment book, from what I remember, I think it was, it's getting it together. Because basically, you know, you do, you will do the local town, you know, the places around town, your village pizza, Leo's pizza, all that, but you got to get some big, you know, you, you have to kind of like persuade like a Home Depot or, um, or like a Target, you know, you get, get corporations in there too to, to spread it out. Because the problem with those, the only problem with those books were, the later they came out, you'd have to, um, um, there were things that expired quick in those. So if you took like three months to sell them, you only had like a one or two month span for certain things. So that's another thing to think of too. But that's, that's kind of where football back in the day got the idea to do the cards. Cause the cards, it's a six month thing, you know, from, you know, from, from August through January, you can use that. So any, any thoughts on that? Dan, do you think the Boy Scouts would be interested in a project with us? Um, not, not on yeah, their own. They actually, I think, completed one other one at Emerson or they're working on one at Emerson. Um, um, so you have to have someone that needs their Eagle Scout badge thing. So in Weathersfield, for instance, there's been a lot um, so Kathy Bagley is actually the one that would contact them and see, but uh, I think there probably would be interest. I mean, they've done stuff like uh, spread wood chips in the trails at Mill Woods. They're beautiful. It, you know, you get a whole bunch of them to do that as a, as a project. So I think um, it's certainly worth pursuing. Uh, they're looking for projects and things like that. Um, 
So if you supply the material, they will probably chip in and, and do a lot of it. And usually with the with the uh, with the Eagle Scouts, they have to raise their own funds mm -hmm. um, and find their own contractors to donate to help. So that's another yeah. thing you can think about. It kind of puts it off of us and onto them. Yeah. Now the town could always consider um, finding a way to be a match, so we could raise funds to be that match. So it's not all on the Eagle Scout. Or, or in kind uh, work or something like that too, perhaps with the town employees, perhaps. To, to go back to the hoop house for a second, um, you do know that the property back there is infested with Japanese knotweed. I don't know if you realize how virulent that stuff is. Not, it's not poisonous, but it just is hard to kill. And uh, you almost need a, a chemical treatment to do it. Um, so you ought to take, you ought to get some consultation on that because it, it's growing right out of the floor of the hoop house. Um. <clears throat> well, Japanese knotweed is a, is a supplement that people take. Can we sell it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Your reading reading razor. I'm Can it. we bottle it up? <laughs> there, there is a restaurant. There's a restaurant in New Haven that's actually serving stuff like that. Uh, but, but, uh, no, seriously. I have Japanese knotweed in my medicine cabinet. It's, it's people use it to treat Lyme disease. I mean, really? if we got so much back there, let's, let's hook up with an apothecary and make it happen. Yeah. Good luck on that. Okay. <laughs> so does the committee agree that we should move forward on this too? Is this a, a, a I mean, it's a small project, but it'll bring us back in front of the community. They'll see that we're working on connecting with our, you know, our Eagle Scouts, maybe with High Crest School. We're going to try and create a small fundraiser to pay for it, even to provide the Scouts with whatever they need. It's really just a cleanup. They wouldn't be expected to build the house, hoop house, unless they had a advisor who really knew how to do it. But, you know, just, just the cleanup we'd be looking at them for. Is, are we in agreement that this is a worthwhile project? So sure. while we're waiting for public input, regardless, who's going to use it, Cindy? I was thinking High Crest School. I mean, I, they are right there, and if we can really get it cleaned up, I would think that we could. The Weathersfield Education Foundation has been um, very interested mm -hmm. in helping the Keisha Farm Committee on some STEM activities, and if we could, mm -hmm. they have money. They've raised funds that they are giving for teacher curriculum projects. So they're willing to fund the creation of a project. And if they knew that they were going to have this available to them in the spring, it could be something that they would they would use. So then we're connecting with our, you know, our K through 12 education system and promoting STEM. And regardless of what happens to the farm, it's an improvement because the hoop houses are not filled with not weed. They're actually, you know, kind of functioning entities. The other thing to consider is you could try to work with, although the senior center is basically shut down at the moment, uh, this uh, two gen or, or multi-generational concepts of just, you know, there was a, a push for a while in municipalities to kind of work with senior centers and youth to teach basic, um, you know, horticulture for the most part. Um, New Britain Senior Center did a great project with um, two of the elementary schools where they actually um, grew flowers in a greenhouse that was built off of the senior center. So the youth would come in a couple times a week. They would learn how to maintain the um, whatever the flowers were or herbs or whatever they were growing. And then they turned around and sold it at the um, farmer's market. So there's kind of these unique opportunities out there if you want to repurpose those for the time being. Um, the problem is I'm not sure I want to mix right now due to COVID um, seniors with um, elementary school students, but it is that possible. It is possible. <clears throat> All right, so the, in order to kind of build up our um, exposure in the community, I was, I had talked to Gary about this. There is a Facebook page called Keisha Farm for All that we had created as just a uh, a resource for people who wanted factual information about the farm prior to the referendum. And I was wondering if the committee would agree to repurposing that page, leaving it as Keisha Farm for All, taking down everything but the photos, all the 
comments and things that were used towards the, the referendum, making Gary the administrator, giving a couple people here maybe editorial privileges like Mary and Tara and anyone else who was interested and start posting some of the things that we're doing about, you know, it, about all the positive things that we're doing about the farm. Not, not that we're making decisions for people, but just giving them information, maybe access to our minutes or, you know, telling them, taking pictures of the barn and talking about Mary Dunn, or if we, are, if we get this hoop house thing off the ground before pictures and after pictures and just getting, getting people excited about the possibility. So when we do finally have those public meetings, people mm -hmm. will have thought about some of the opportunities that the farm will, will um, present. Maybe getting another drone video, we'll have to have, you know, there's a beautiful one up there, but maybe getting an even more extensive one and then using it to promote some winter walks or something. Maybe Jim and the, you know, as you can add to your, your, your locales, but having a Facebook page really connects us with the community in a, in, in a positive way. Maybe we can disable comments. So it's just strictly, you know, this is what the committee's doing and we hope you like us and just leave it at that. I think that's a great idea because I think people are wondering, um, I'm still an administrator on that old page and I don't know, uh, Cindy, if you noticed that there's some, you know, there's some likes, <laughs> new likes on it. Um, and people I think are some, some people are visiting it. So I think getting it refreshed and I think people are wondering about, you know, people who, want it to happen and people who you know who are a little skeptical are just wondering what the heck we're doing so i think it's we have a good story that you know we don't have the funding but we're trying some creative ideas you know that kind of thing and that's great i i'm glad you you agree because if i were a townsperson i would see like you say on both sides if i voted for it i'm getting the tax bill but i don't see any yeah access and if I voted against it it'd be like this is what I said was going to happen I was going to end up paying for this and there's nothing there so I I hope that we can make something positive on that happen there as well I think people what I like about the Facebook now. page oh sorry go ahead Gina I think people are online now more than ever too mm -hmm. so to have just to keep posting things like you're saying you know people we're talking to projects we're thinking of just getting people slowly engaged in the process now is going to help us later when we when we are asking people to come to these, you know, town meetings and you know they'll be a little bit more invested in the process hopefully earlier on. I also think the Facebook page, as if if I'm correct, it has a few thousand people. Um, and Mary, I get the alerts too that people are liking the page, and I'm not sure what to ever do with it. <laughs> So, um, yeah, let's clean it up. I think it's perfect. And I, I think we could all now be reaching out to our networks and have people like this page. Um, you know, and, and maybe they have ideas for fundraisers and things that they would like to do on the property to help us. I don't know. The engagement would be good. We may have to, we may have to disable it for a little bit while we clean it up. I don't know how that works, but we could say, you know, stay tuned. We'll be back or something. Okay. I'll look into the face. I'll look into disabling it and recreating it with Gary as the administrator. Um, yeah. Would you I, mean, be I mean, if, if Mary's, I don't need to be the administrator on it. Um, I think like what I'm doing with a couple of the commissions here that have now started Facebook pages is kind of just give the town the right of first refusal just to make sure whatever goes up there is okay. But I, I don't necessarily need to be an administrator. I could be a, a, I don't, I guess my thing is just in the interest of time, um, schedule and other things that I'm working on. If I'm going to be in the middle um, to try to get stuff up there, I'm going to be the person who's your bottleneck. And I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be the barrier to things moving forward. Um, only because as I only have so much time in a seven day stretch. Um, but it's easy enough for me to review things um, as they come up. All right, great. I just didn't know if you wanted, you know, that final say, or if it, you, you'll trust us not to do anything that would be uh, not in the spirit of this committee. So, and then you can always review it and say, take that down. And yeah, I, I, you know, I guess that's my thought is, like I said, right of first refusal. If you want to just zip it to me, hey, I'm posting this up. Even if it's just mm -hmm. right in the body of the email, I'll give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Okay, great. Jenna, I've been getting, I signed up for the Newton Community Farm newsletter. 
Um, and they always do something fun like a recipe or now it's fall y'all and you know things. Would you be willing to write something for the page? Yes. That, I, I mean, a recipe using September's ingredients or whatever. And that'd be wonderful. Yeah, sure. Dina, we really want you to put together something with Japanese knotweed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll look at that. <laughs> All right. Okay, last thing for me. I know Gary's probably getting nervous. He has to go, but how about a logo? How about a brand, like some a picture that would represent us and, and making it some kind of um, something to do with the schools and arts and things. And Gary, you have you reached out to uh, the superintendent? I did reach out to the schools because again, just trying to figure out how we how we build our next level of leadership and connectivity to uh, the public sector. I read uh, um, reached out to Mike Emmett um, because my son as a freshman was involved in two different uh, classes. One that was a business class that worked at uh, kind of the marketing component of it. So tying everything from marketing the product to production of the product. And I thought that might really, and then it was tied into like a graphic design class, which was interesting for Sam, who's not really in the graphic design side of things, it's, but he did very well. Um, but anyway, I thought it was an interesting opportunity for students uh, to maybe use some of their artistic abilities and some of the technology that's available to them at the high school level. Um, in fairness to Mike Emmett, I just sent it to him maybe yesterday, um, overnight, and uh, school did just start, so he's got his hands full, but he's very good at getting back to me. Um, and I told him, you know, if you want me to reach out to, it was Mr. Palazzo, who's a teacher, I'm happy to reach out to him, but wanted his go ahead first. I think it'd be great to have a graphic design that we could put on all of our correspondence and on our page and would immediately indicate this is Keisha to people. And I mean, I don't even know if the name will stay Keisha, but this will be the, the image that people associate with Keisha. I think that'd be a great idea. I think it'd be great if it came from the youth. I, it's such a great <laughs> town um, future. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, it's for them. That's the whole idea. It's, I mean, it's, you can see it's going to take us a while to to figure this out and fund it, and but it's an investment in the future. All right. Um, I, I have a question. I was late. Did, did the minutes get approved? They did with one abstention. Um, so I took some notes for you, Mary. Oh, okay. Which and, I can send you, but go ahead. Okay, you got it then, Gary. Yeah, it. no problem, I'll get, get it later. One thing I'd like to bring up before the end of the meeting. I've been talking about Kip Kolosinskis for a long time and I, I, I guess maybe I should reach out to him but I'd like to hear uh, that that's a good idea and that we should do that and maybe invite him to a meeting, go for a visitation. Is that possible or is there some reason why that shouldn't happen? And Gary, you didn't seem enthusiastic about it so the question is directed at you I think. I mean, yeah. I think at the last meeting we we said, yeah, it's. I mean, if he's meeting our group out there, and he wants, that's fine. Okay. If we said at the last meeting, that would be okay. I just don't want. I'm. I'm just trying not to direct a lot of traffic through there right now, for like other people. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So meet our group group out there, and maybe come, maybe attend the next meeting, perhaps, or something like that, to talk about the possibilities. So. The next meeting, and I apologize if I didn't say this before when I gave the thumbnail, um, the University of Hartford group, if we're willing to be, have that conversation, they, they, they were interested in, in coming to the next meeting and potentially having some, uh, you know, groundwork laid down by that meeting, but it would only be, you know, the, um, the uh, advisor and maybe one student at that point, just to get a feel. I mean, I have no issue if, if Kip attends that as well, it's, um, obviously as a speaker, um, but just, I did forget to mention that, that they were interested if, if there was availability to be that at the October 5th meeting um, to chat. And that would make a pretty, pretty busy meeting, but all right, let, so I will, I will reach out and try to, is there any particular times when more people could attend if we got together at the, and took a tour of the farmland uh, with the group? And now that the uh, it gets dark earlier after dinner, it's not such a good idea. But 
Uh, should it be a weekend or, <clears throat> or is anybody interested in coming and doing that? I have a lot of flexibility, so I'm going to let just defer to the people. There's a lot of people still working and, you know, I, I mean, we could do it based on interest. People who you, you set it up, Jim, and people will let you know if they can go. All right. Anybody have any preference to times if they really want to go or? Oh. I mean, if it's, during, if it's during the week, I'm working uh, until 4, 4.30 at night. So uh, during the week, it would have to be after that for me. Um, so, so like five o'clock, you could, I mean, obviously five 30, you could make or. Yeah. But I don't know about the rest of the crew. I know uh, there's other people working here too. I could make it on the weekend. As long as I got a week or two notice, I could make it. All right. Well, let's see what I can, what I can come up with. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> All right, I get really encouraged. I feel like we're moving forward. I think we have some some opportunities here. Is there anything anyone else wants to bring up? Anything you've been thinking about or things we should do or could do moving forward? Everybody kind of have something. I'll, I'll work on that Facebook thing, trying to get that back up right away so we can start maybe posting some things there. All right, Gary's going to work on the school, get the school connection with school. Tara's going to think about some kind of fundraising for the hoop houses. Did, Dan, did you tell me I should reach out to Kathy Bagley and shoot? Yeah. Well, what stuff? I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot her an email tomorrow. And then um, we've got a park board meeting at the end of the month and I'll bring it up there again. Cause she's, you know, she kind of lets me know what's going on. I didn't even know we were getting a million dollar, uh, uh, I don't know if it was a, a bond grant. I don't know what we got a million dollars from spring street. And then, uh, I didn't even know anything about the project that the Boy Scouts were doing at the um, reservoir at, until last meeting. So that was, you know, that was great news. So uh, certainly she's got connections with the Boy Scouts. It's, it's done a number of things for us. All right. So could, could I ask what's going on with Spring Street? Well, I think Gary might know a little more details than me, but it's, um, we got, uh, there's a plan to, fix things up with the flooding and a few other things. And out of the blue, we kind of get a million dollars. Is that right, Gary? Yeah. That's a pretty good summary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Senator John Fanfara advocated for two projects uh, with the State Bonding Commission, a million dollars for Spring Street improvements and about a half a million dollars for improvements to the Wolcott Hill Road um, area close to Jordan Lane, which would tie into the $2.7 million that was already received for renovations on that. Huh. Uh, side of town. Um, and so the Spring Street loosely is, and I'm saying loosely because it has to be amended, will follow the Spring Street. Um, well, there was a multiple dams were reviewed as part of a, I just have to say it, a dam plan. <laughs> um, and I can't resist. And uh, Spring Street was one of them that kind of rose to the top in the Senator's mind. Um, and so it includes a number of improvements that were from the plan, but we have to kind of Derek uh, Gregor, who's the town engineer, is kind of dusting it off and, and updating it because I think the plan was completed in 2009 or thereabouts. It's kind of older, but there's but um, it will address. Frankly, it could address it could address from uh, Route Three all the way down to into the old Weathersfield, kind of that branch off. But I don't know how much of it they're going to try to accomplish with a million dollars. They still have to price it out. Very interesting. Oh, I look forward to hearing about that. Are you going to have a public hearing on that, or is that just a fait accompli? Are we going to get to know what's going in there, or? <laughs> <laughs> there will be some. I don't know how we'll address it, but there will be some. There will be some notice to the public about what will be done. The state requires it and we, we wouldn't keep it a secret anyway. Um, but yeah, we will dust it off. Good. All right. All right. So next meeting. There's no public comment. Is there anybody listening? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's tuned in. Okay. All right. If we have no other uh, comments or questions, uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. No one Second. else. Second from Dan. Okay, great.
All right. Be well, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in. And Mike, yep. Mike Rossini, you didn't say much. I'm going to have to call. Uh, <laughs> I, I, came, I came in a little late. I snuck in a little late. That's why. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to have to review some stuff because I, I know Gary taped it. So. Hope you're well. Hope everything's All right. good. Okay. Everything's, everything's good. Good. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.